Hey guys and gals, survivors, earthlings, smurfs, etc. Welcome back to Unturned 3 Early Preview. Today we're going to take a look at Unturned 3.9.5.0. This is the latest iteration of the game at the time of this recording anyway, which happens to be April 17th, 2015. And we are going to jump right in and take a look at a few very specific new features that Nelson has added since, um, well, since my last video. He's done a lot of work, but unfortunately I can't show you everything because I don't have that kind of time. But there's two or three new things that I think you guys are going to find pretty interesting. And we want to take advantage of this, our tour guide today. We have a, uh, a very special guest. It's Indiana Smurf. Or Papa Jones. Dun, 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 dun. So while he's here, he has decided to help us with this, uh, with this demonstration. So we, we have to take advantage of this. So let's go. Let's jump into uh, PEI, Prince Edward Isle, and get started. I'll meet you guys there. Dun, 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 dun. Crack that whip. I wish I had a whip. Let's take a look at Indiana Jones. Unturned needs a whip, Nelson. Um, so check him out. He's got his leather pilot's coat on. I love it. The khaki pants. The fedora. The sidearm. Just like Indy. I love playing dress up in this game. It's so much fun. So many new outfits. So we're going to have a ball um, hunting down all the different hats and things. But we can't do that yet because the game's not done. Nelson's still working on, uh, obviously, the content and especially fixing up this map and making it ready. And I don't want to show you too much of the map. And that's why I've been holding off because I don't want to spoil it for you guys or for me. But, uh, but that's not here nor there. What is here today is some of the new stuff at least two or three new features that i thought would be interesting to share with you guys so let's get rolling uh one of them one of them happens to be generators not only are generators back in unturned or at least unturned three early preview that is but they now require a fuel source check it out it has a gauge right on it 82 percent full click it on provides power to the nearby devices which it has always done, of course, but now it sucks up fuel. And you need to keep it filled or else it's going to run out of fuel and then it's going to stop providing power. So I really like this change a lot because in the old Unturned 2, generators would run indefinitely. That means forever. And that's just silly, goofy stuff because now we are forced to go out and get fuel for it if we want to have power at our bases. So I think that's fantastic. Um, and we have to share that fuel and be smart about it and share it with other, uh, with our cars and so forth. So that's pretty awesome. Let's go ahead and fill it up. I have a full tank of gas here, gas can, and we're gonna pour it right in. There we go, 100%. Now I have, I haven't done any serious testing with this, but it has been on. I've had this power generator running while I set this uh, my little campsite up here. So maybe 20, 30 minutes of getting ready for this episode and it went down about 20%. So it's gonna last a good long time, I think. So we don't have to worry about it running out too quickly. This, Although that still may be balanced, I don't know. Um, oh, okay, I'm back. Sorry, minor interruption there. My son's home. Uh, Chief Chirpa, my, my smiley land partner in crime, but um, Anywho, let's pick up where we left off. What were we doing? Oh, yeah. Show any new stuff. Check this out, guys. We now have a fuel gauge on the outside of cars. So all you have to do is look at a car, and you'll see how much gas it has in it. Which, I'm not sure I like that. It used to be where you'd have to hop into the car, crank it up, look down at the fuel gauge, and then see how much gas is in it. Kind of like real, like real cars. Because most fuel gauges do not show you the amount of fuel in a car unless you at least turn the ignition. You don't have to turn the car on, but you have to at least turn the ignition, uh, you know, halfway so it gets power. Um, it's convenient to be able to look at a car and say, oh, it's got 30% gas, just run by. Ah, okay, let's go get the next one. But I don't know. I don't think it was that big of a deal to just hop in and, and uh, start it up. So that's my thoughts on that. All right, what else? What else? What else? Oh, food. Food. Cooking and food quality. So there is a very base cooking system added, and I, I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't 
figure out how to cook anything. I don't know what the ingredients are. Uh, back in Unturned 2, if you had any raw food on you and you stood near a fireplace, then you would have a, a menu for cooking things. Like if you had some raw venison or raw pork, you could put it on the fire and it would show you a, um, a way to cook it. But that is not the case now. So I'm not sure exactly how that works, but in the change log notes for this last version, he does mention, Nelson does mention a cooking system being implemented. And that is controlled by your skills, which this is new as well. Now, all characters have access to all the skills. So Nelson has eliminated the classes. Um, so now we can, we can spend our experience on any, any of the skills that are available in the game. So this is going to allow for a ton of customization. I think that's a great move. I absolutely do. So if you want to be a cooker or a good fisherer or a farmer, but you also want to work on your sharpshooting and your immunity, you can. Right? So now you can spread your, your experience among all three of these uh, offense, defense, or support uh, trees, I guess you could call them. By the way, fishing is coming. Fishing and hunting will be added um, in April, according to uh, Nelson's change log. So that's going to be very exciting. Now, getting back to the food. So there's a new food quality system. And you can see here the quality of the item shown, which is down here. This, this, uh, the triangle in the corner shows you the quality of an item at, the, at a glance. That's actually been in here for a while. And the, the green indicates it's good quality. It's in good shape. Red indicates it's very bad shape. And that extends to food as well as gear. So you can see that this tomato right here has a red uh, triangle in the corner. That means it's rotten. And if it's less than 50%, which unfortunately you can't see, and I hope that changes. It's just kind of a guess right now. Uh, if it's less than 50%, if any food or water product is less than half quality, it'll make you sick. So let's eat this tomato and try it. For science, Indiana Jones. Dun, 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 down the hatch. Take a look at my food and my hydration and my toxicity levels down there in the left and watch what happens when I eat a rotten tomato. I got a little food, I got a little hydration, and I got some, I got more toxic. Your toxicity level actually goes down, that means you're becoming more toxic while the other gauges go up. I know it's, it's backwards, but, so now I'm actually more toxic than I was before, and if I ever reach zero toxicity, I turn into a zombie. I'm, actually, I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure what happens, but I think that may happen. But it, anyway, the point is, it's not good to eat rotten foods because you'll get sick. There might even be added effects down the road, like maybe nausea, where you have, uh, you know, 30 to 60 seconds of, of uh, you know, swimming view, or maybe you're stumbling, or maybe you can't shoot straight or something, I don't know, but for now it just adds toxicity, and it doesn't, it doesn't fill you up like it should. If you eat something that is obviously 50% or above, like this, um, this red vegetable, then it's okay. But the condition does determine how much food and how much hydration you get out of that item. So that makes sense. Now, we also have uh, canned bacon and bottled coconut and apple juice in various states of disrepair and rottenness. And we can actually do something about this, at least with the drinks. Let me show you. If we go to crafting uh, and we repair, if you have purification tablets, which I happen to do in my, my backpack then you can repair or purify and make that drink better. So if we look down here, what's less than 50%? Right here. Our bottled coconut is spoiled. Rotten. So let's go ahead and drop a purification tablet in there. And now it's 100% and we can drink it safely and not worry about it. This is 60... Is that 66? Oh yeah, yeah. It says 66 if I point at it here. It looks... You can't, it's hard to see in the green, but it looks... It's much more visible when you point at this. Okay, so 66% apple juice. We can drink that apple juice and we'll be perfectly fine. So let's try it. Oh, I keep using the old system of control clicker. That doesn't work anymore. I'm not, I'm really not sold on this. This seems like it's more clumsy. It seems like it's two clicks. This is the new interface. Now you can right click on an item and you have two options. Drop or equip. And then you get the description here. But it's a whole extra click. 
So I'm, I'm, it's a little bit cumbersome. I'm hoping that uh, Nelson takes some of the feedback to heart and thinks about this because it, it seems it seems more unwieldy, to be honest. But anyway, let's drink our apple juice. See what happens. That's good apple juice. It was okay. It didn't really fill me up as much as uh, a good apple juice at 100% would have. But our bottled water here, our bottled uh, uh, coconut juice is really going to put us up to the top. Oh, that's good. All the way up, baby. Now, I'm just curious how bad this bacon is. Don't try this at home, kids. It's all for science. So it filled me up, but not much. Like, normally... A can of bacon would really uh, fill your belly up, right? But it also may be super toxic, too. But that's okay, because I has vitamins. Down the hatch of the vitamins. Remove some of that toxicity. Mm -mm -mm. Very good. Lovely, lovely indeed. So there we go. Now, I'm going to try to mess around with this cooking, because, again, I'm not sure what's going on. Like, there's no cooking. Even though I have cooking skill, let me show you. I have cooking skill. In fact, let's dump another 40 in there. So the three levels of cooking is level one, ingredients, level two, snack meals, and level three, formal meals. I'm looking at the change log notes. So I could probably make snacks if I had the right ingredients and I knew what to do, but I don't. So I don't really know what to do. <laughs> but at least now anyone can cook if you want to. You just put some points into it, and maybe we just have to wait for the raw venison and raw pork which is going to be added with hunting, and then we can cook up that stuff on a fire. Some kind of fire will be um, will be necessary, according to Nelson and, and Change Log Notes, in order to do some cooking, which makes sense. Uh, and lastly, now that we have available all the skills for all characters, we can repair again. Because that was a bummer when you could not repair. You had to find someone with repair skill to repair, which I think was really just a bad idea but now we can repair our stuff again so as long as you have the right ingredients anyway now repair my gun and my assumption is is there a crafting or is there a repair because repair used to be a support thing right mechanic oh that's vehicles um, it would be nice if there were a skill that could determine the kinds of things that you could repair or at least get more out of your repair be more efficient at it so so rather than, you know, maybe if I'm really good at repair, it would take fewer metal pieces to repair my guns and maybe, or maybe each piece of metal or each repair um, event or task would, would, would repair more for someone that was better at it. But hey, it's still an early preview. There's still tweaks to be made. Some of that stuff might be added down the road. I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. But anywho, I think I think that's it, guys. Um, we can actually, you know what? Let's do one more thing because we like to shoot stuff and blow stuff up. Let me show you one thing here. I know we can now. Um, we can make. We can make grenades. So I'm just looking at something here on the screen. My laptop. Let's make up a few grenades with some explosives. And some nails. Gives me some nails, please. 71 times. Well, not, not times, but nine. There we go. And let's see, where's this? Oh, I hope it's here. I hope it's here. Oh, no. Wait, is it raw explosives? Oh, wait, that's, that's regular explosives. I need raw. Well, I think that's the same, though. Okay, I, I thought I was going to be clever and make some grenades and go throw a grenade, but I can't. I, I don't know, think I have the right material. I'm not sure if this is highly explosive use for use in explosives. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. I'm missing something here, guys. Maybe that recipe's not ready yet. Okay, never mind about the grenade crafting. I don't know how to make a grenade. So instead... And as a, uh, a second prize, as a consolation prize, I'm going to throw a grenade in my Jeep and blow it up because I don't want it anymore. Yeah! What? Oh, it went right out the back. <laughs> I don't like this color. So, let's, uh, let's get rid of it. Can I throw it lightly? I don't think so. Got it! Nice! 
It's burning. I better back up. Whoa, there it goes. I want a green jeep. Dang it. All right, I'm going to go hunt down a green jeep. Oh, nope, that's a minivan. I don't think I want the minivan. <laughs> well, we might as well grab the scraps. Because I could use those. I don't know where this orange vehicle came from anyway. Can I get anything else out of you? No, nope, I guess that's it. Just uh, burned fingers is all. All right, with that, folks, I think we're going to call it quits. I'm going to crank up the lights and get a fire going and roast marshmallows. I wish I knew how to cook, but I can't wait. Can't wait for the fishing and the hunting and the cooking. It's going to be awesome, and I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and we shall see you next time. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye, everybody.